Uh, after the assembly is complete, there is the tweaking phase. Uh, for example, this rotating boom has to come back to its position after the ball is passed. These flip-flops here have to come back up to their position after the ball is passed. And the two switches uh, may need um, adjustment so that they lean correctly or the ball might jump out. And finally, and probably most importantly, uh, the distance between the rails themselves. That's an important thing that can really solve problems for you if you wind up with the ball not having enough speed. You could check whether the distance between the rails are varying, which is not good, and you could adjust where you put these um, clips to make the distance between the rails as even as possible. For the rotating boom, there are two things to, be, to adjust. The position of the scoop picking up the ball and the scoop picking up the ball down here. And the second thing is the rotation itself, so that the boom comes back nicely to its original position. And for that there is a counterweight that can be moved towards the center of rotation with little effort, like that, or towards the end, which will affect greatly how it rotates. Let's see how this works. That works nicely. And these flip-flops here pose a bit of a problem because they're designed to flip only so far and come back, which works nicely, but it's attached to uh, another piece to connect it to the vertical rod. And that connection isn't steady enough to maintain its position. So after a while, these flip-flops turned out lower and lower and lower until it didn't work anymore. So for that I actually used uh, super glue to permanently glue the flip-flop piece to its adjacent piece. So they can never be taken apart but that doesn't matter much because even if you want to change the design you can always use these two together. And in the end the flip-flops should work like this. There are two switches sending the ball right or left every second time. And the switch isn't attached to anything other than the rails it's hanging from. So it can be adjusted right or left or leaning forward or backward. Um, a little bit of tweaking to find the right position so that the ball doesn't jump over the edge. And when done, it works like so. If the distance between the rails vary, the ball will sometimes roll into an area where the rails are wider apart, causing the ball to drop down and roll on a point closer to its pole or, or axis of rotation, causing it to rotate faster but moving slower along the track. And then if the ball comes into an area where the rails are more tight together, theoretically it should um, get the speed back because now it is resting on rails further towards its equator. But that's only in theory because uh, in practice there will be uh, some skidding when the ball moves. It, it can't completely transform its uh, energy into rotation and back into speed. So the skidding will cause uh, energy to be lost in the friction, in heat and everything, and the end result is that your ball will at the end not have enough speed. So the ideal situation is that the distance between the rails is constant and you can tweak by actually pushing on the rails if needed and also adjust the position of these clips. There are two kinds, the kind that attaches to the vertical rods and the pre-hanging kind. And in my kit there were extra of these rod attaching ones and you can use them as well for the free hanging positions if needed. But if you if you really can make sure that the distance between the rails are constant, that can really solve big problems for you, especially if you have trouble maintaining enough speed with the ball. That's probably the biggest tip regarding ball speed. Thank you for watching. Have fun.